In this example problem, we will be adding four vectors together. Now, when you add two vectors together, you can use the law of sine or cosine, but that's not really helpful when you are adding multiple vectors together because the law of sine and cosine look at a single triangle. So if this is the vector r, we can add one and two vectors together. But if we were looking to calculate four, so three, four, you'd have to do the law of sine and cosine here, and then a second time, and then a third time. So it becomes really impractical when you're adding 10 different vectors together. It just becomes a lot of adding or a lot of sine and cosine. So instead, when you're adding the vectors together, start by practicing adding Rx and Ry. And these first problems, especially the solutions that you'll find online for any kind of adding two vectors together, will likely use the law of sine and cosine because for two vectors, it's pretty easy to do that. But let's start by practicing the more difficult way on an easy problem. Um, and this example problem, I'm doing four just to make it a little bit longer and show you exactly how, but your first homework problem is only adding two forces together or two vectors together. <clears throat> so we need to define all these forces in their components. I like to have my magnitude and direction separated so that anytime later when I'm referencing these vectors, all of the information is always in the same place and I know where to look. I even represent um, force components that are zero. The X component of this 60 Newtons is going to be zero. And I like to represent that as well as zero so that I know I'm not missing a component. It sometimes if you don't, put zero as placeholders for components, and then you accidentally forget, let's say we accidentally forget to add both X and Y components of this F4. You don't realize that you're dropping it because you're not used to even looking for X and Y components of every single vector. That's a personal habit. You don't always have to put zeros as placeholders, but I do tend to do that. So let's go through and define this F1. 60 newtons and the y direction. This is an obvious unit vector, but I'm doing it to keep track of where the magnitude is for later, not because I can't see that it could be 60j. That is a valid definition. But the reason I put it in vector form, like I said, is for my own personal reference when I'm doing this problem later on. And so I like to keep everything in the most obvious form. F2, 75 newtons, and in the x direction is the 0 0.85 and 0 0.5. For F3, that is 125 newtons for the magnitude, and it is all in the x direction. For 100 newtons, positive cosine, negative sine. So that would be cosine 40, negative sine. 40. Now I'm not going to simplify this vector down and distribute that 100 through at this point or, or simplify down the x components of the sine and cosine because I want to leave everything in variable form as long as I can. That helps with precision and accuracy or it helps making it more accurate so you can give your answers more precisely. Adding all these vectors together. We'll start with the x component, which we've written down 
to be this first column. So we can add all of this together, including the magnitudes, and that gives us the x component. Zero for F1. 75 times 0 0.85 plus 125. One, I'm not always going to put that one in there, uh, but sometimes I might. 100 newtons times a cosine of 40. For RY, which is the Y component, adding all of these together will be 60 newtons plus 75 times a half plus zero plus 100 times negative sine of 40. Notice here, I have not distributed that negative sign through. It is a good practice to keep the negative sign where it belongs. This negative sign was derived from the unit vector. It wasn't derived from equation substitution and moving variables around. It is inside this unit vector component. There is a couple of reasons why I do that. Um, the first is to track my negative signs. Um, if there is an error in my work, it's a lot easier to go through and check your work looking for negative signs in their proper location. Um, also, it's easy to drop a negative sign, so it does help with um, keeping your problems correct. But also, just in teaching, if I um, do always distribute my negative signs through, you're getting positives and negatives, and it's a little bit hard to follow where they are. So hard to follow for yourself, but for me, I do it because it can be hard for, to follow for y'all. Although sometimes I will distribute the negative sign through, um, especially if it's so obvious like this, um, but not always. And when I keep the negative sign where it belongs, now you know why. Also, I do not expect you to do this either. Um, as long as what you write down is true, Everyone works problems slightly different. Come up with a method that works for you. Notice that I've written both of the equations before I simplified them down. I like to do my calculations at the very end of problems. Another personal preference that you might follow as well. So we finished here. Rx, if you simplify down this equation, is 266.55 newtons. Ry, when simplified down, 33.22 newtons. If I was to write this down in full vector form, it'd be 2266.55, newtons. If I wanted to, I could find the magnitude you'll want to carry through all the units. Um, so I can find the magnitude R being 2.68 or 268.612 newtons. And if I wanted to look for um, the direction of it in terms of an angle, the opposite over hypotenuse or opposite over adjacent 33.22 over 366 would be 7.10 degrees. On exams, I will often just ask for you to give me the force components. Y plus will often ask for you to calculate the magnitude and direction. So whatever you're looking for, find it in those that format.